Good morning, dear distinguished guests and speakers. We are delighted to have you here to participate and share with us a panel entitled The Gulf and Syria, with or without Assad. As we are approaching the seven year anniversary of the tragic Syrian crisis this month, today we will assess the Syrian conflict from different angles related to the Gulf region. In terms of Gulf intervention and then impact on the Gulf states, um, really it, it, it began pretty quickly after the revolution uh, in the sense that those states that had invested in Bashar al-Assad tried to engage him, cajole him, not to respond with brute force, uh, particularly uh, the Emiratis and the Qataris, and, and also, although they're not a Gulf state, Erdogan himself, with regards to the GCC in Turkey, for a period of time, the existence um, early on in the conflict on low levels of extremism and then gradually the, that extremist element growing, the existence of that dynamic within the opposition had differing levels of impact on the GCC and Turkey's support to the opposition. And again, Wilde has touched on some of this. Basically, there were, in my view, a definitional differences of what were extremists in Syria. And that determined differing levels and differing directions of GCC and Turkish support to the armed opposition. Um, in addition to definitional differences, we also had, again, what Wilde discussed, was the intra-GCC competition for influence. So the fact that, again, as Wahal said, the US failed to take a leading role in coordinating or managing the support of the opposition earlier on meant that the complexity of the armed opposition became a reality, meant that the role of extremists became a reality. Um, bring things back to today. Uh, the GCC, when within and of itself as individual member countries appears only minimally invested in continuing to support the armed opposition in Syria. And there's a whole long list of reasons for that. Um, but it's essentially because the conflict itself has changed very significantly over the last several years. I think it's less to do with the fact that extremists exist because they have existed in one way or another for a long period of time. It's more to do with, in Saudi Arabia's example, a lack of bandwidth. The conflict in Yemen is clearly the overarching dominating factor um, in Saudi. Within the context of today's uh, geopolitical environment, uh, what otherwise could have been a channel from the GCC tr to try to, you know, in, in one way or the other, try to coordinate um, some sort of diplomatic resolution um, to uh, the status quo uh, in Syria could have been possible except for that between the Trump administration's initial lack of understanding of Oman's role, its potential assets uh, when it came to these issues, and the fact that uh, the Gulf crisis has not only disrupted uh, the GCC itself, but the six members of that group are increasingly looking to see whether or not Washington will prevail in solving the crisis, and if not, then what will it be? Uh, the rift among the GCC countries had been first one in 2014, after actually the, the, the Saudi and the Emirati uh, take a uh, harsh against what they believe that the Muslim Brotherhood. And that has a huge implication because some of the groups who are fighting in Syria, let's say, are uh, uh, have some of uh, Islamic ideology, some of them linked to the Muslim Brotherhood. And that has implication where uh, the only, let's say, uh, uh, the, the, the only uh, group who united in its, its policy in Syria was the GCC. Not only in, uh, in Syria, but after the Arab Spring. Thank you all very much. I, we had a lot of questions we never got to on subjects we never got to. Hopefully we can address some of them in the report of this conference and on our, on our website.